Uh, I'm going to start out with one verse and then I'm going to work my way through some stuff tonight. One verse in Galatians chapter 4, verse number 19. Paul makes an expression. He makes an expression. Um, he speaks to the Galatian church. He says, my little children, in verse 19, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I thought I was going to preach from one subject and I was going to preach from the topic, the church needs an upgrade. But then as I began to prepare and study and talk to God about what the church needed tonight, he actually gave me a different subject to draw your mind into where we need to go. A lightweight church in a heavyweight fight. Somebody say that with me. A lightweight church. A lightweight church. In a heavyweight fight. In a heavyweight fight. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, Lindsay, last night when I was preaching, I was in 2 Kings chapter number 4. And in 2 Kings chapter number 4, we talked about the prophet Elisha and how there was a Shunammite woman that the prophet Elisha spoke of and spoke to, told her that she was going to have a baby. And that not only was she going to have a baby, but she was going to have a son. And so the Bible said that by, according to the time of life, she had a son. Now that in and of itself was a miracle because at the time it was impossible because her husband was old. Mm -hmm. And so she has the baby, and then as the baby grows up a few years, he has what they define as a heat stroke and dies. And the woman of God goes and gets the prophet of God and says, come back with me, and you got to bring this baby back. I'm not going to be satisfied to let my baby die like this. I told the saints last night, some of you have buried it too soon. Y'all not going to talk in here. There are things that look like they are dead in your life. And instead of you trusting God to give you a miracle, you buried it to some. Yeah. But this woman took the baby, put him up on the prophet's bed, went and got the prophet. And ultimately, when the prophet came in the house, he did something that was rather unusual. The first thing he did wasn't unusual. He prayed. Mm -hmm. He prayed. But then after the man of God prayed, the Bible declares that he laid on the boy. Mm. Eye to eye, mouth to mouth, hand to hand. And ladies and gentlemen, my last point of last night was put your weight on it. Put your weight on it. When you walk with God in a particular capacity, you learn what it means and you gain the ability to put your weight on some stuff. But the problem we have, ladies and gentlemen, is we got a lightweight church <laughs> in a heavyweight fight. Have you ever, y'all just let me taxi down the runway if y'all don't mind, and we'll take off in a little while, but have you ever had your mouth tuned up for dinner or for lunch and gone to a restaurant and you waited in the line at the restaurant for five, ten minutes waiting in line and your mouth is all tuned up for whatever you had a taste for. You get all the way to the front of the line. You get there and you speak to the clerk at the register. You put your order in. And then in that moment, the clerk says, I'm sorry, but we're out of that. <laughs> now, depending on how hungry you are, you're either going to, and, and how badly you wanted that particular item, you're going to do one of two things. Number one, you'll find yourself settling for something else that they do have on the menu. Am I talking up in here? Or 
you hold your head down and you buck a little bit and you just walk right out the door. Anybody ever walk out the door? I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that that is much of the condition of the church today. People are coming in hungry, looking for something in the church. And in them looking for something in the church, they come in, they get here, and they find out that what they came here seeking, we don't have it. You know, I found, you know, in my travels, ladies and gentlemen, I travel preaching this gospel, and in my travels, one of the most common things, Brother Washington, one of the most common things I hear is we're tired of church as usual. Some of you have said those exact words. I'm tired of church as usual. Mm. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, this, uh, we, we get up and we go to church every single week. We sing the same songs. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we got songs we sing. We, we almost can tell you what's going to happen next. We know when they're going to say hallelujah. We know when they're going to say amen. We know when they're going to break out in the dance. We know all of that. And the danger is we call it a move of God just because we danced. Wow. All right. Just because we shouted, we say we had a move of God. Yeah. Can I go a little deeper? Just because we cried a little bit, we said we had a move of God. But ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you, all Elder Lindsay has to do is play just the right notes on the organ and it can stimulate you to cry. Amen. That does not necessarily mean that you have been, you have had a God experience. Amen. People are coming to church. They're looking for restoration. They're looking for freedom. They're looking for hope. They're looking for regeneration. And yes, they're even looking for miracles. Yes. And somehow we lack the weight to get it. Let's be honest. That's where much of the church world is sitting right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an indictment against us that people come looking for heavyweights and all they find are cheerleaders. We're good at standing on the sidelines cheering. But now, when it comes down to being a real heavyweight in the Holy Ghost, we have so few. <sighs> Jesus, I feel the anointing in here. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if somebody walked in this door right now that was demonized, oppressed by the devil, most of you would wait on me to come down out of this pulpit to go meet the person that's got the devil in them to cast the devil out instead of somebody on the pew being powerful enough to say, man of God, don't you keep preaching. I got this. Amen. I wish I had a church to help me right here. See, most people would take off running. See, oh, I know this. Y'all don't believe in demons anymore. Y'all don't believe that there is a, such a thing as demons that are plaguing folks' lives. But they are. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we, the body of Christ, you sitting in the pews, somebody walks in this door, and we don't have heavyweights enough. And listen, and we seem to think that we got to have a title to be a heavyweight. Mm, God, have mercy. Ah, oh, God. We think, oh. Get ready to get ugly right here. And for some reason, the, the people who would try to tackle and deal with that devil, they go through all these theatrics. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Go through all these theatrics. Y'all have been in some of those services where they're screaming and hollering and yelling and screaming and hollering and yelling. Come out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Listen, you never find in the Bible where Jesus had to do all that to cast the devil out. You never find in the Bible where Paul had to do all that to cast the devil out. They just spoke the word and with the authority that they had, they were heavyweights in the spirit. Amen. I mean, of course we know Jesus was, but look at the, look at the apostles, look at the disciples. They were heavyweights. You 
you're out here wrestling, don't want something, leave that alone. If you're out here wrestling with demons that you don't have to wrestle with. Amen. When you get into the ranks of a heavyweight, you come to understand that there is nothing that can stand against you. No demon can stand in your presence that you don't have authority over. You don't have to wrestle with him. You don't have to struggle with him. You stand flat-footed and say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to loose your hold. Yes. Amen. And people should be set free. I know, I know, I got people who are watching my social media. You say, well, I'm Baptist. I don't do that stuff. I'm you. I'm United Methodist. I don't do that stuff. Listen, in this day and time, I don't care what denomination you are. You better understand that there are demons that are on assignment against regions. Demons that are on assignment against households. Demons that are on assignment against cities. Demons that are on assignment against our nation. And you better be able to cast out a devil. Yes. Amen. Mm. We lack the weight to get the job done. Somebody say, Lord, help us today. Lord, help us today. Ooh. It's not designated. Oh, let me work right here. Now, heavyweight people are people who have spent time with God. Yes. They're people who have power with God. Now, watch this. If the truth be told, God is looking to make heavyweight people out of people who will never have a title at all. Yes. Somebody say, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Oh, y'all not saying with any authority. I said, say, that's me. That's me. But now, for this to happen, there's got to be some training and development. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we got an issue. Y'all want to know what the issue is? The issue is dysfunctional people are promoting more dysfunction. Yeah. Amen. I don't get it, my God. How we got 16 and 17 year old bishops walking around here in the body of Christ. Calling yourself an apostle and you still got milk around your mouth. Amen. Yeah, I'm, listen, I'm not just standing as a bishop tonight. I'm standing in apostolic authority. It's time for us to straighten this stuff up. That's right. Amen. Just because they got a little hoop to them does not mean that they qualify to be an apostle. Amen. Just because they know how to preach a sermon does not qualify them to be an elder. There is something that has to be developed on the inside of them. And we have been promoting dysfunction. And the Bible talks about not putting amateurs in position. Not putting uh, people who have who don't have training and development. We, we, we put stuff in place that doesn't need to be in place. Elder Lindsay, before... They lay hands on me to become a bishop and an apostle. They check my life. Oh God, I'm a shorty. Yeah, they checked. They got reference letters from people that work around me all the time to make sure that my life qualified because what they didn't want was to give me a title and then ultimately become an embarrassment to the kingdom. But we're creating more dysfunction. Now watch this. So what happens is when we put these dysfunctional people, see, the dysfunctional people are people who feel like they need to have a son or a daughter up under them. You know, that's, that's the buzzword now. I got all these spiritual sons and spiritual daughters. You're trying to be all that for what? Yeah. For what? Trying to prove that you're something for what? So now you're giving these young, uh, untrained, underdeveloped people positions and not even, watch this, not just young and underdeveloped by way of their age, but even spiritually they're young and underdeveloped. Giving them titles, giving them roles. And so because they have not learned the principles, because they are not themselves heavyweight, how can I teach you what I don't know? How can I develop you in something that I've never been developed in? 
Now, I said we had an issue, right? Well, let me tell you about another issue. The next issue is that nobody wants to take the time to get developed like they should. Nobody wants to take the time, or very few people want to take the time and get developed like they should. The first time you get rebuked, you leave the church. That's true. I know, I know. And you get mad because they didn't say it the way you thought they should say it to you. If, if they rebuke you a little harder than you think they should rebuke you, you take off running. How is it that... I'm going to work here tonight. How is it that you say God called you to a ministry, God called you to a church, God called you to the kingdom, and the moment you get corrected to be realigned, you take off running. If you were called to it, you stick to it. Amen. Amen. We have too many people running. And then what they'll do is they'll call you a false prophet. Because when you start getting in their business, Oh, they get mad then. When you start trying to bring some alignment, they get mad. Say to God, if you're going to be a heavyweight, because people need heavyweights, not lightweights. If you're going to be a heavyweight, you've got to be able to endure correction. With the understanding that Paul, when he was speaking, I'm travailing again over you to Christ, to the Christos be formed in you. I want this thing to be developed and matured in you. If you're going to get to be a heavyweight, you've got to be developed. You've got to be worked on. You've got to be challenged. You've got to be cut. Yes. Amen. I have not always liked being cut when I got cut. Amen. When my bishop had to call me in and give me correction, sometimes, now I thank God because my bishop is not one to put me out there and try to embarrass me. But he will correct me. Amen. He'll call me in and say, Long, I need you to sit down. I need to talk to you. I need you to fix this. I need you to fix that. Not only does my bishop correct me, but sometimes first lady, she's like mom to me. She'll sit me down and say, son, let me talk to you. Now, just because spiritually, by, by position and title, I outrank her, does not mean that I should not sit down and listen to the wisdom of God coming through my spiritual mother. I, God have mercy. If we were to sit down and listen and learn and grow, how much stronger would we be? Amen. I know this isn't a popular revival message, but I'm trying to develop mature people. I'm trying to work towards mature people. Because you know what? I can get up here and preach you an exciting message and tell you God's going to bring you out. It's going to be alright. But listen, when you become a heavyweight, you start to already know it's going to be alright. Because you understand that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. So, and then, oh God, when you're really mature, you even get a statement in your spirit that says, even if he doesn't deliver me, I still won't back down. I still won't Quit. I still won't throw in the towel. Amen. Isaiah 30 and 10 says, they told us, they said to the seers, no more visions. They said to the prophets, don't prophesy to us the truth. Speak present, speak pleasant words. Prophesy illusions. We want people who can call us out by our names, give us our address and our phone number. Listen, you know your address. You know your phone number. I don't need to call you by your name or your phone number to get your attention. All I got to do is say, hey, the Lord said. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I'm going to tell you about being a lightweight church in a heavyweight fight. If there's anybody in here who wants to actually become a heavyweight, you know what's real cool? Even my teenagers can become heavyweights. Amen. When I was in my teens, I was casting out devils. Amen. When I was in my teens, I was casting out devils. Because I had a relationship with God that went beyond other stuff. Now, 
Here's where I got to work a little bit. Y'all ready? If you're going to be a heavyweight, number one, you need desire. Amen. If you're taking notes, write that down. I've got to have desire. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the nature of man. It is our very nature to desire more. More. It's our nature to desire more. We get a job, we tend to want a promotion on that job. We get a house, we want to either decorate it real nicely or before long we want another house. You got a nice car sitting in your driveway. But before long, you start eyeing what other car might be your dream car. Or maybe it's not a car, maybe it's a motorcycle, whatever your dream is. It's innate in a man or a woman to desire more. Here's the problem. Say this word with me. Substitutions. Substitutions. We have desire. We want more. But instead of us going after the thing we need to go after when it comes to becoming a heavyweight in God, instead we find substitutions. <laughs> we, we, we're stuck on just having good church. Substitutions. We're stuck on singing a song that we like. Substitutions. Let me take it a little step further. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we don't want to go all the way to do what needs to be done. So we will do just enough to get by. Mm -hmm. We do just enough to get by. But when God starts demanding more out of us, what we do then is we will go find something else and it takes up our time. I know I'm telling the truth. Okay, when was the last time you were supposed to go on a fast and you didn't go the whole fast? I can't hear nobody talking. I, I, I know why we're not talking because it's hitting hard. Yeah. yeah. When was the last time you were supposed to go on a fast and you didn't go on the entire fast? Because you had to make a substitution. When was the last time God woke you up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray and instead of getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray, you told God, I'm tired and I need my rest. Substitutions. Yeah. When was the last time you were supposed to be spending time with the Lord but instead you said, I need some time off. I'm going to go hang with my friends. And so you went and hung with your friends instead of being isolated with God. Substitutions. Anybody, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Anytime, when you look throughout the Bible, one of the places where you see the weight of the anointing developed was often in a cave. Amen. Often in a cave. The prophet Elijah was, he had to go to a cave. Are y'all hearing me? I'm telling you, when you look throughout the Bible, caves happen. Caves are important. Why are you bringing that up? Because God sometimes needs you isolated so he can insulate you. So you can hear his voice and not get caught up in all the other voices that are around you. Amen. We got too many voices in our ear. I can't hear nobody. Amen. I said we got too many voices in our ear. You got your family in your ear. You know, you start going through problems, going through struggles, going through difficulties, and the first thing you do instead of going to God is you go to your family. You go to your friends. Something is wrong when we go to other people first before we consult God about the matter. Listen, the greatest wisdom you can ever get will always come. The Bible says, seek the things that are above and not things that are of this earth. If we would begin to seek God, seek his face, we would develop an ear to hear his voice. And when we develop an ear to hear his voice, we will become heavyweight. Comfortable. 
right where I am. I watch this all over the body of Christ. We get comfortable right where we are. Someone starts teaching new principles that we've not heard rather than us sitting, taking notes, mm -hmm. and then going back and studying it. Mm -hmm. We say, I, I, I don't know nothing about all that. That's what we say. I, I, don't, I don't know anything about all that, so I'm not going to worry about all that. All I know is he saved me. <laughs> now, when you were a babe in Christ, he saved me work. See, that work on the level that you were on. But you 20 years in Christ, and all you can say is he saved me? You can't even quote 10 Bible scriptures off the top of your head. All you got is he saved me? No wonder we're not having weights. We don't even know what we believe. Somebody asks you about the third day resurrection, you don't even know anything about it. Haven't taken time to study the Hebrew calendar. Oh, y'all do know that there's spiritual significance behind the Hebrew calendar as it relates to us as believers, right? See, while some of y'all were celebrating New Year's on, on December 31st, listen, some of us stepped into a whole new year all the way back in September last October. Maybe that tomorrow. You know, Yom Kippur. See, when we don't understand, when we don't take the time to study those things and understand their significance, we don't even know, listen, some of y'all think Pentecost is the day we come again and shout because the Holy Ghost came. I want to have a deeper relationship with you than I've ever had before. God, I 
want more. Yes. Yeah. Desire. Next is your diet. Your diet. Somebody said diet. Diet. Y'all still with me tonight? Yeah. Your what? Diet. diet. See, if you don't get to be a heavyweight, watch this. There are some people who are heavyweights because now, and I'm not speaking bad about anybody, so don't take me the wrong way. Don't don't go don't go left on me. There are some people who are heavyweights, and most of their body composition is fat. And then there are some people who's who are heavyweights because their body composition is muscle. One of the things, Shamando Koshalai. One of the things that helps to determine whether you will be a heavyweight by fat or heavyweight by muscle in the spirit is how you eat and how you exercise. God have mercy. I said how you eat and how you exercise. How you eat is so important. And many of us watch this. We eat, we love to eat sermons that make us feel good. We love the sermons that make us shout. That's it. That's where I'm going. We love the, ser the sermons that make us shout. We love the sermons when they tell us God's going to bring you out. We love the sermons that say you're going to get a blessing. We love those sermons. But ladies and gentlemen, there has to be at some point. See, right there you're eating sweets. And don't get me wrong. Every now and then I like a good piece of cake. <laughs> but cake should not make up my primary diet. Talk back to me up in here. Cake should not make up any one of our primary diet. Because as we get more and more overweight, we are less functional. Amen. 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 When you are overweight by way of body fat, you become less functional. Your breathing is more difficult. There's so many things that become more difficult for you because you are now carrying a load that you were never designed to carry. Somebody ought to say, God changed my appetite. God changed my appetite. God changed my appetite. I don't just want to hear a good, a good message that makes me feel good, but give me an appetite for a message that makes me hungry for you. Give me an appetite for a message that challenges me to grow. Give me an appetite for a message that challenges me to go farther than where I've been. Lord, give me a new appetite. Amen. Y'all want some more? Yes. Well, here we go. Give me a new appetite to get gossip out of my spirit. Yes. Amen. Y'all, y'all, church folk, y'all know y'all like gossip. Mm -hmm. That's one of the major diets of the church. No wonder we can't be spiritual heavyweights. Because we got diet problems. We eat wrong. We would rather hear about what happened bad to somebody mm -hmm. than to hear what happened good to somebody. Preach. We will spread bad news way faster than we'll spread good news. Mm -hmm. she will get on the phone. Child, did you hear what they said about Brother Rolando? <laughs> That's my drum. I'm just bothering him. <laughs> did you hear what they said he got into? And you sit on the other end of the phone. Child, what? <laughs> We have the wrong appetite. No wonder we can't be heavyweights in the Holy Ghost because we got wrong appetite. So we're sitting up getting spiritually fat on junk. Lord, please help us get rid of the appetite for junk. Yes. Folks still jumping on these video gossip blogs and watching the video gossip blogs. Now, whatever they do, that's on them. If they don't feel convicted by it, that's on them. I'm not coming down on them. But what I am saying is to the believer in the body of Christ, we shouldn't be the ones sitting up there watching this stuff. But I just want to know what's going on. Why? Why? Let me help you write this down. I have no opinion where I have no responsibility. 
Why do we feel like we got to have an opinion about everything? How are you going to put your weight on something when all you are, watch it, you mess around and suffocate the little baby. Or you mess around and not, I mean, you be smothering him. Y'all remember? He said, yeah, he said, he was on top of him. He was, I mean, he was all that weight. If he'd have been spiritually on weight, nothing would have happened. But he was a heavyweight in the Holy Ghost. He was a heavyweight in God. So because he was a heavyweight in God, when he laid on the boy's body and he began to breathe on the boy, the Bible says the boy's body became warm because he was a heavyweight. I got to hurry. I'm about to close this, y'all. You got to have a diet that's changed. You got to have a diet. Lord, listen, what tastes good may not always be good for you. So God, give me a taste for what is good for me. Amen. I'm about to slide in home now, ladies and gentlemen. I told you you got to have desire. Number two, you got to have your diet right. And oh, by the way, since I'm speaking of your diet, let me ask you what your diet in the Word looks like. How often? It's about to get real ugly right here. How often do you study your Bible? I did not say, how often did you read your Bible? I did not say how often do you read your Bible. I said how often do you study your Bible. How often do you dig into the pages of it and cross reference scriptures to understand where this came from and that came from. How often do you do that? I'm not talking about because you went to Bible study at church on Wednesday night. I'm talking about in your own private time, in your own devotion time. How often do you study your Bible? You're not going to become a heavyweight if you don't study. Amen. I mean, the book says, see, if I'm going to give it to you, I got to give you the book. Study to show yourself approved. Can I just switch it up? Study to make yourself a heavyweight. Is, is, that the, is that a good artistic license? Study to make yourself a heavyweight. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not be ashamed. Study to show yourself a heavyweight so when you get in the ring, you can fight and beat the devil at his game. Study so you have word under your belt. I remember when Jesus was challenged by the devil in the wilderness. The Bible declares that when he came against him, the Bible said that every time the devil came, Jesus said it is written. You can't give back what's not in you. So I'm trying to encourage you tonight to get something on the inside of you that will change you forever. That so when you get the word down in your heart, it changes everything about you. When you get the word in your heart, it even changes the way. Not yet, no, I feel it rising. I'm not yet. Ah, but when you get the word inside, it changes the way you speak. You don't speak downtrodden, but you speak victory. When you get the word down inside you. When you see sickness, you say it's already healed. When you get the word down inside you, it changes everything about you. The word changes the way you talk. The word changes the way you walk. The word changes what comes out of you. Amen. Now, I gotta go. Oh, I feel this in here tonight. The la I told you number one was your desire. If you're going to be a heavyweight, number one was what? Desire. 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 Thank y'all for helping me preach. Number two was your desire. diet. Number three is your determination. Determination. Hallelujah. Your determination. You got to be in a place where you are determined that I'm going to be a heavyweight. You know what I love about God? I'm about to bring this thing home. But you know what I love about God? He'll never put you in a fight that is beyond your weight class. Amen. God, he'll never put you in a fight that's beyond your weight class. He'll never let you get in a fight that's beyond your weight class. So what you're saying, Lord, if you are facing a trial, if you are facing a storm, if you are being tested, you can rest assured that there's something on the inside of you that is enough for you to come through it with power, strength, and might. God won't let you go into a fight that's beyond your weight class. Amen. Not when you've been walking with him. But what he's going to do is he's going to push you. He's going to train you. He's going to develop you. He's going to push you. 
to say, don't stay in the lightweight class. He's going to say, it's time for you to move up to the cruiserweight. Then he says, it's time for you to move up to the welterweight. And before long, he says, it's time for you to move in to the heavyweight. The Bible says, if the footman weary you, what you going to do when the horsemen come? I want to be powerful enough that when the horsemen come, I got enough strength that I'm a heavyweight. I remember, Lord, I feel it right here. I remember that the prophet of God, when he got ready to go, he had been under a tree, but the Bible said he got up and took off running. Now, Ahab was in the chariot. And the Bible said that the prophet outran the chariot of horsemen. I thank God when you become a heavyweight. You're not worried about the horsemen because you got the footman on the run. I, I can run through a troop, leap over a wall because I'm a heavyweight in God. Somebody declare that after tonight I'm seeking to become a heavyweight in God. Do I have about 
into a new place. With the help of God. I will not preach another sermon in my life with the help of God that does not challenge people to grow and get better and get stronger and to become a heavyweight. I'm going to remind you again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the hour where you cannot afford to be a lightweight believer in a heavyweight fight. You're going to have to be like the prophet Elisha was with that little boy on that bed and put your weight on it. And know that when you put your weight on it, something is going to happen. I feel the resurrection anointing in this room right now. I'm prophesying to limbs that are acting up. And I'm saying limbs come back into alignment now. Shut up under the bulls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy to somebody's knee. And she can tell the bulls. Right here in the knee, you've been having problems. But in the name of Jesus, be healed. In Jesus' name. We put our weight on it. Come on, put your weight on it right now. Put your weight on it. It might not be you, but it's somebody that needs it. Put your weight on it right now. Yes. Hallelujah.
I'm trying to raise up a people that three o'clock in the morning when trouble rises, they get up and start walking the floor. Yeah. And they're not walking the floor because they're nervous. They're not walking the floor because they're scared. They're not walking the floor because they feel like maybe, maybe, might be it's not gonna happen. But they're walking the floor with a confidence. I'm gonna pray until something happens. I'm gonna pray until I pray through. There's something about having the ability to pray through. Amen. That's what heavyweights do. Yeah. Amen. Heavyweights know how to pray until they pray through. Yes. Watch this. And sometimes it doesn't always happen on the same day. Amen. Heavyweights know how to put their weight on it regardless of how long it takes to see it happen. Amen. Heavyweights do things like have a prayer box in their house where they write things down and they put them in the prayer box and they go to the prayer box and they lay their hands on it and say, God, everything in this box, I'm believing you to give me a miracle. Yes. Uh oh, can I give you one last thing? I'm really trying to quit, but can I give you one last thing? Heavyweights are not always praying about their own stuff. Yes. Amen. Heavyweights have intercession in yes. their heart. They see beyond the three feet of space that's surrounding them. Amen. They have a burden for other people. A burden for their country. Yes. A burden for their state. A burden for their church. A burden for, wait a minute, a burden for their pastor. Yes. Amen. Heavyweights aren't judgmental of their pastor. Heavyweights stay on their face for their pastor. Yes. Amen. Y'all not talking up in your mouth. Yes. Amen. They don't want to stay on their face for us. If we make a mistake or we miss the mark or something, I mean, we're human. We do. We don't make the right decisions all the time. And then they want to get on the phone to talk about us. But when's the last time you stayed on your face asking God to cover us? Yes. Hello? Amen. When's the last time you got on your face and asked God, Lord, cover my knee? Yes. So take, I'm talking about daily. Yes. Yes. And I'm not talking about just out of tradition either. That's right. That's right. And that, that's what lightweights do. They do it because it's traditional. Heavyweights do it because it's in their heart. Yes. 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 We do it because it's in their heart. Yes. I've been guilty. I've been guilty of not covering my leader like I should. So I don't want you to think it's just y'all. I've been guilty of it too. And God has had to call me back to the place. Long you need to pray for Bishop Wright and Lady Wright every single day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, God. Yes. I hear you. Tonight, if by chance you're in here and you're not saved, I told y'all earlier tonight, this message was really not for the unbeliever as much as it is for the believer. I came in here under apostolic anointing yes. as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ to challenge believers tonight to go back to the place where you seek God to make you a heavyweight. Yes. God, make me a heavyweight. Yes. But if by chance you're in here and you're not saved, you need to give your life to Christ. I do want to invite you to come to know Jesus. The altar is open. Last time I was here, I renamed this altar. And every time I come, I rename this altar. I don't know if they named it back, but when I come, I name this altar the No Judgment Zone. If you're in here and you need to come to the Lord, you can come. Nobody's going to look funny at you or judge you. We want you to come. Amen. The old song says, He will pick you up and turn you around. So glad to have my voice back a little bit. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Yes. I just need that to make the devil mad. Yes. Amen. <laughs> to the utmost, Jesus. Saved.
saved. Listen, honestly tonight, I don't necessarily have to, and I'm, because my body is not back in full, full strength, I'm not going to lay hands on people tonight. I've learned better these 25 years of preaching. I've learned better. Some stuff you just don't do. So I'm going to speak a word. <laughs> I got good sense. I'm going to speak a word. If you need healing, whatever you need from God, tonight you can have it. Father, I thank you that every need in this house is already met. Thank you. Exceeding abundantly above what anybody in this room could ask or think. I praise you tonight, God, that as you meet each individual need, that it doesn't even scratch the surface of your power, the surface of your might. You are so amazing, God. So I praise you now for meeting needs all over this room. I praise you now for empowering the people of God. I praise you now for turning situations around. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. I thank you for the turnaround. Somebody declare the turnaround right now. It's turning around. It's turning around. 